Today, our question of the day is, who and when do I implement in my leadership team for my group practice? So I want to give a shout out to Maureen Warbach from the Group Practice Exchange, first and foremost, because I did a coaching session with her and she was the one who really guided me. So I'm going to um, share some of the things that she recommended and what we actually ended up implementing in my group practice and how you can actually go ahead and have a, a leadership team that really works for you. I actually did this on a podcast, so I'll link the podcast for everybody so you can listen to this. So there's going to be a time when you have a group practice where you are able to manage everything that's going on in the group practice. You will still see your clients. You'll hire people. You'll still see your clients. You'll, you'll get those people going. But the more people you add or the more that you, the services you add to what they're doing, you're going to need support. The first person I always recommend somebody hire is somebody to answer your phone. So if you are thinking of having a group practice, now I know there's some outliers out there of people who still answer their phones when they have a group practice, more power to you. I just think what I've seen is that it is more helpful for the group practice owner to do higher level things than the phones, but it depends what kind of practice you have. But I do recommend you get somebody administratively to help you with phones, with billing, with scheduling appointments, with faxes, with sending emails, with doing social media. You want to get the administrative stuff off your plate that you can pay somebody for. If your rate is $150 an hour and you can pay somebody $10 to $20 an hour to do that task, it is time for you to take that off of your plate. Once you get the administrative tasks off, then you want to start thinking about the clinical team that you have. What was recommended to me was to have site supervisors, we call them director of operations, and a clinical director. I have a site supervisor for each location and a clinical director that oversees bo both of our locations and all of our locations. Having those people in place have helped us grow tremendous. We have been able to both double in size of clinicians and double in size of revenue with having that support because the line wasn't just me to the clinicians. I've always had an office manager, somebody answering my phone, but it wasn't just me to her, to the team. It was the site supervisors, the clinical director, our office staff, so we have an intake coordinator and an office manager, and then me. So if there were any issues that happened, it, it would never come directly to me unless there was some kind of like high level thing that was going on. And so that just helped to alleviate the amount of work that I was doing that was minutia, like smaller details things. And then I was able to work on the bigger picture of the practice. So when you're thinking about implementing a leadership team, I want you to think about how can you become the CEO, the president, the owner of your group practice, and who do you need in place? If you only have one location and your, your clinical director is going to be in that role full time, you might not need a director of operations. You might just need a clinical director. If you have admin staff that are full time in office, again, you might not need a clinical director to be there full time because that office staff can help mitigate some of the issues that come up. So your particularities of your practice are really going to be focused on the type of practice you have. Again, whether it's private pay insurance, mostly virtual, in office, multiple locations. There's a lot of things that go into it, but you need support. I want to talk more about outsourcing, delegating, but first I want to thank our sponsor, Therapy Notes. If you're looking for an electronic health record that's really full service, one that can really help you to run your practice and have your administrative ha staff help you run your practice, through billing, scheduling appointments. They send out reminders. They're such a great EHR and they have a free telehealth option. I want you to check out Therapy Notes. When you own a group practice, there are gonna be things that you're gonna to have to let go of. Again, that might be the phones. It might be your emails. It might be scheduling appointments. It might be marketing, it might be social media. But the if you have a grand scheme, a grand plan for your group practice, even if it's not to have 20 clinicians in multiple locations, but you really wanna have something that's really special. 
you are going to have to delegate. So I want you to do whatever soul searching right here that you need to do in order to start delegating, but you do need to delegate so that you can soar. You can do everything that is up here that will make your group practice really stand out and be here for as long as you want it to be. Good luck building your smart group practice. I'm here most days of the week answering your questions. I'll see you soon, everybody. Bye.